it's crazy because people always ask me, they're like, Natalia, what's your website? And when you think of a traditional website, it's like desktop friendly versus a link in bio where it's like mobile device friendly. So I, I personally not affiliated at all, but like Koji because I don't get any like weird pop-ups like, oh, you're going to a desktop website. But instead it's like mobile to mobile, app to app. So it's nice. It's more formatted for the mobile device. Hey, my Vatos Locos, welcome to Paul Vato Presents. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Natalia Michelle. She's an actor. She's a social media influencer, a star, has many followers on TikTok. So we're going to delve a little bit into the world of acting and social media and kind of how it all works together. So uh, please welcome Natalia Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, honestly, and reaching out too. I'm so glad that we were able to fit all of this in within such a short time frame. So I'm really excited to just get the ball moving and to be back on Fireside, as we were talking about earlier. I haven't been here in a while, so. That's right. I mean, you are obviously one of the early uh, adopters, and that's maybe one of the things that we can talk about, uh, adopting early into new technology, social media platforms, et cetera. Because yeah. um, I found out about it, you know, probably through the usual, you know, there's Clubhouse and then there's this and there's that. Yes. Times, a yep. lot of things have changed. Yeah, same here. Um, what happened was I was really growing through a Clubhouse. I was joining a bunch of different rooms, as you probably know. This was all last year. And somebody was like, yeah, let's do a fireside room. And I was like, fireside? Because that's it. What's that? So I go on Fireside and start explore or exploring this, you know, new platform. And I'm like, oh, this is like this is pretty cool. This is like if Clubhouse dies, we have Fire Fireside at the very least. So I was like, okay, interesting. But ever since then, honestly, like what we probably all experience with so many new apps coming out these days, it's so hard to stay and keep tabs and posts on every single one that's out there. So it's like, okay, where do you focus your time and attention and creativity towards at the end of the day? And what would you say to that? I mean, because, and you're right. Uh, you know, I was already overwhelmed with just having Facebook. And what happened to me is I had a shift of mind, and it was because of Clubhouse, was that uh -huh. I shouldn't be uh, posting as, or or not posting, just consuming it like, like a consumer. I should be acting like a content creator and use it for my business. I mean, I feel I've wasted the past 10 years not promoting any of my businesses because I wasn't using it as a content creator, I was using it as a consumer. And then every time a new platform comes up, you're like, oh no, now how do I find time to do this or do that? So I guess my question to you is, are there certain ones that we should definitely be on? And then should we try each new platform that comes out and see where we jive or see, see, see what works for us? Yeah, the first thing that I wanted to say, and I was going to say it earlier, is like, first off, and I tell this to everybody, don't feel overwhelmed or like, oh, you missed 10 so years because you haven't been posting consistently on this platform or these platforms. I think we're just reaching the tip of the iceberg as to the possibilities that social media has for everybody. And it's still evolving, and which is something that I really wanted to talk about because I saw Emma Chamberlain talk about this in a different podcast. So I just wanted to touch on that. But it's so crazy as to like follower account. Anything can happen these days, especially I personally believe on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok right now, and I said this like two years ago, and I'm going to keep on saying it, if you're not on TikTok, you really should be on TikTok because I still help, you know, my clients and also my videos. We get like 10,000 views, 20,000 views, half a million, all the way to a million. And then even if you get good on that platform on TikTok and really learn the concept on how to become a creator there, you use Instagram Reels, very similar to TikTok, by the way, and then you can start getting like half a million views and start even getting paid on there. So those are definitely the top two, but even still to this day, it's like telling people you have to get on these platforms. And even if you haven't been on these platforms within the last two years, one year, one month, 10 years, whatever it may be, you can still go viral overnight literally as long as you know what you're doing and also ideally the key thing or key component is to have that consistency with the virality so that's that's wonderful and that is such true advice because speaking from a personal point um you know i i 
I'm always an early adapter in that if I see something, mm. I'll sign up, but then I don't do much with it. So TikTok was no different. And I was hovering mm. at like 250 followers forever. Like I probably got 250 mm. right away just because I, I, you know, I had some, uh, some followers, a lot of followers, I think a lot on, on, on Twitter uh, mm. and not many, a couple thousand on Instagram. Uh, but then with, with TikTok, it just, it kind of almost happened overnight because I just started being consistent and posting. Uh, and then I had one video go viral, which got like 725,000 views, which nice. for me, you know, outrageous. I think I did see it pinned at the top of your profile, right? Yeah, yes. I did see that one. Okay. I pinned it. Yes, I've, I've pinned those. And then I put two more up that also hit like eight, 9,000. But it's incredible to think that, you know, how long would it take me to, to talk to that many people or touch that many people? Uh, you know, it would take forever. I mean, also on uh, my YouTube experience, I was popular there early on, like 16 years ago when it first started. Uh, and then I kind of let it go. But I maybe have half a million views on YouTube. I had one video on TikTok hit 725, you know, in a day or two. It's crazy. Yeah. And then it boosted my followers up to like 5,000, or which kind of what I'm at now. Uh, and, uh -huh. and same with Instagram. It was because of Clubhouse. You know, they didn't have a back channel. So it grew organically from like, 2500 all the way now to uh like almost 10,000. Uh so but it is it's that consistency of posting and then I got monetized on Instagram and and it's you know it's not a lot of money but you see 100 extra 180 bucks come in a month you're like, "Whoa, okay. Just for doing yeah. what I was doing anyways." And that's not, you know, counting the stuff that I'm using it to promote my podcast or, you know, my cigar company or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, that makes sense. And even at the end of the day, too, when it comes down to posting on these platforms, like you even said before you were on top of the YouTube game, right? YouTube is still not dead at all. 100%. Right now, when it comes to monetization, as you briefly touched on, Instagram does have a monetization, you know, platform right now, to be honest, that is weirdly where I'm getting most of my income from is Instagram monetization, which has been a blessing for me. But YouTube still ranks at the top tier for when it comes to monetizing platforms right now, Pinterest is kind of like ranking second, but we've seen this pattern of like every other social media platform wanting to compete with TikTok. So they're trying to compete with TikTok on different avenues like monetization, what, like with virality, like YouTube shorts, even too. YouTube shorts even still has that same organic view potential. So you can even still get back on YouTube. It just, you know, our platforms are still evolving. So it's not even like, yeah, just only do TikTok. It's kind of a little overwhelming to say experiment with everything. But you never know what could even work for you or your brand with how fast our social media platforms are changing based on who they're trying to compete with. Amazing. Uh, yeah, amazing. And and uh, also LinkedIn, maybe. Uh, I, I hear, I don't know if you're doing much on LinkedIn. Yeah, I actually started posting on LinkedIn, um, like hardcore, religiously. Um, I want to say about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I saw Gary V like talk about LinkedIn around the same time that he started talking about with TikTok and TikTok, what again, for me was just the one that was performing better. So I stuck with that one. And then now I'm like, okay, I feel like I have a better foundation. I can actually it grow and expand my roots on these other social media platforms. So yeah, I am experimenting with LinkedIn. I haven't found the crypt of the crop when it comes to how to gain virality on LinkedIn for myself as like a creator. If it's more for like, you know, brands and businesses, I have a few successful posts there, but LinkedIn, I'm still experimenting with. Still definitely growing the community on that. It's 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 amazing. So so I don't think people should shy away from anything new. It's eventually you find something that clicks. And and I think you said a great important thing, which is stick to what's working. So if yeah. you're making money or or um, you know influencing on a certain platform, stick to it and then try these other ones. And just it's a matter of repurposing your content. You've already created it. Why not put it up on another platform and see and see what sticks? That's what I do. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I am back to, to YouTube and especially because I'm recording mm -hmm. this podcast and there's, it's a video podcast. So, um, and, and that's the other thing when you jump on early, uh, to, to a platform, cause you know, uh, Spotify and anchor just debuted the video podcast maybe a couple weeks ago. So they're excited when people start doing something like this and hopefully then they'll help push it. Uh, just like maybe Pinterest did 
because all of a sudden, you know, they want to compete with TikTok. So if you're on Pinterest, they're like, yeah, let's push this people's content because it'll it'll start competing and, you know, they'll be excited to be here, whether it's monetization yeah. or anything like that. Because even Pinterest pins, I've been seeing actual growth with. I think one of my first Pinterest pins has already over 300 monthly impressions on, which is good. And I'm like, okay, this is like one of the first few posts, so we're just getting out there. So even just trying and experimenting with these new profiles is at least what you can do and just stick with what keeps going on because I cannot express enough how much consistency will affect the growth of your profile like what it does with anything you do in real life consistency so it's all about mm -hmm. consistency and by consistency do you mean once a day three <clears throat> times a day ten times a day uh once a week what would you so, recommend so here's where i think there's a lot of misconceptions this does change very frequently so don't quote me on what i'm gonna say but in my personal opinion what always has been the golden rule for me is post as much quality content as you can quality over quantity over anything right if you're just not feeling inspired and you just feel like you're trying to force posts out there your audience can tell and i can say that because i was like oh i you know i can like script it i'm an actress i can I, it's fine you know and then i'll go ahead and i'll do it and it's like no they can tell they can tell it's like it's human interaction people can tell so especially when it comes down to a platform where people are, where people are craving authenticity number one is like quality over quantity and authenticity over anything if you have the energy and if you don't have the day job the nine to five to hold you back which i'm pretty sure a lot of people that might be listening to this have you know that in the back burner then don't feel pressured to post four times a day people like myself that have content creation as a full-time career we get paid to make four posts a day you know so it's like we don't have that nine to five job which is why we can take on more um just know that that's what you're competing with too at the end of the day so you're gonna have to hustle hard um, that means, you know, maybe making four posts a day, but don't feel like you have to make it every single day and doubt yourself or your abilities because you're not living up to the expectation because obviously behind the scenes, it might not be different. So posting four times a day is ideal for TikTok. And then recycling and upcycling, as we like to say, those four pieces of content into shorts um, for YouTube, Spot not Spotify, um, Snapchat, Reels, anything along those sort of lines where you can upcycle the content and even using LinkedIn's like text feature. Cause I noticed a bunch of text contents now really performing well. So even just utilizing old videos, anything you can get within a quick five minutes, batch create as much as you can. It takes a lot of planning and pre-production like how we do as, you know, actors and filmmakers to make this content. But you know, it's like now these everyday creators because now there's a demand have to learn these skills so it's just you know understanding that even though you're filming with the same phone or a mobile device it doesn't counteract for the quality that there that there needs to be post as much as you can the more you post the better chances you have of going viral with anything you know and the more actual experience you have and the more better you get right but at the end of the day it's like don't burn yourself out so it's a give right. and take yeah Right. Uh, uh, no, that's all such such great advice. And especially, you know, it's, it's still about, you know, your mental health and mental well-being and physical and all that. So you can't sacrifice that in order to to do that. And, and, and like you said, I mean, you know, you don't have a nine to five, but it sounds like you have a 24 seven. So we have to be careful. Wow. I can't even express enough, honestly. And that's the one thing I feel like, again, a lot of people don't even see with this kind of lifestyle. With content creation, when you first, it's a long haul, okay? When you first get into this environment, not only are you, you know, a lack of pay is an issue, but you're not even most cases getting any pay. Like TikTok is probably gonna start paying you a few cents, if anything. And you still have to meet the demand in order to fulfill it as if you're creating on a full-time production budget. It's very hard, it's very hard to do, but you know, at the same time, that's why I feel like a lot of people are getting pushed into the financial avenue, like being able to learn how to budget better, how to use their money more efficiently, which is another reason why I create like financial-based content because it's another interest of mine, but it's, it's so interesting how like, again, because of COVID and because of what's going on in our industry we're literally creating jobs where you have to be 
multi talented you have to be multifaceted in these abilities in order to hone in this one career choice because of just how accessible anything and everything is becoming now so of course i mean it's 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 uh even with acting it's like we're not just actors anymore we're we're directors we're editors we're uh lighting people we're everything if you if you want to work because everything is being submitted via this so it's the same as that content creation it's it's you're right we're we're everything. So even as a business owner, I mean, sure, you could pay someone to do it, but if you can do it yourself, only you really know. And I think it's that personal touch, like what you said, that that's what people are going to connect with where, wow, I'm really talking to the owner of this company, just like I'm talking to you right now. You, you know, And what is the name of your, for your company or is it just, is it just you, uh, your name? Yeah. Or? So backstory on that. So I have two companies. I have Natalia Michelle LLC, which, you know, we got to make an LLC because we got to protect that, protect liability. And then I have Indigo Media LLC. The difference between the two is Natalia Michelle is more like if anybody wanted to hire me, you know, Natalia to act, model, sing, do something as like myself, the CEO or person at hand versus Indigo Media where it's like, okay, um, UGC has been a big term that's been thrown out around. I don't know if you've heard of that, but if somebody needs UGC content, a commercial film, a video film, you go to the production company in order to get it handled. Marketing will take care of it. What does that stand for? A UGC. So it's user generated content. So that's the new, again, we're creating our own jobs now, terminology that's being thrown around. I've seen, and for clarification, I've seen this word get thrown around in our industry as of like a month ago so don't even feel like you're behind i just learned about it a month ago ugc user generated content is when you have for example a brand let's just say the coldest water bottle i'm pretty sure everybody has seen that water bottle on tiktok it's just a regular water bottle says the coldest water bottle it's said to be the coldest water bottle that exists on the market in order to consistently create videos for their social media page, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, etc., they need a full production scale team with actors, videographers, editors to be able to post, like what I said, to the ability of 4x times a day, not just on TikTok, but every other social media platform that might or might not be emerging at this time because everybody wants to be the first on everything. So they're going to have to hire a production company that specializes in user generated content for social media it might not be commercial work specifically like you know oh do you need a water bottle here's this to fix it it's more again user friendly where we're scrolling on tiktok and we see an ad for this water bottle and, and it might not look like it's an ad the thing that i really like about it is it gives so much creative freedom because now you're having to incorporate trends audios or things within the creative element because you're not trying to make them look like stereotypical Bank of America commercials. So, you know, you're still doing the creative avenue of like script writing, but then now it's more intense because again, our environment is moving so fast, but that's user generated content in a nutshell. Again, it's such a new term that's like come out recently. Before we were just called content creators just for social media, but now it's an actual term brand because so many people are trying to enter into that market now since it's, you know, a trending topic. Of course, of course. Now, uh, and so are content creators creating this these commercials for companies or is it the production company going, hiring you as an actor and then action, film it and make it look like it's, you know, user generated content? Okay, so there's like three main ways I've seen people people do this. Number one is that companies will try and hire through influencers. They'll find an influencer that has a large social media platform because they already know how to film, edit, create videos that actually capture attention. And even worst case scenario, they hope to God are paying for their buck because the person has followers. Their video is going to get seen by someone at the end of the day. You know, that's, at the end of the day, that's the goal. So they're going to try and hire through influencers. The problem, and I'm going to tell you as somebody that's worked with influencers before, as somebody that's being, you know, an influencer working in the influencer market, the problem with influencers these days is they never respond. They don't turn in things on time. And they just, there's that lack of like a business concept of you are a business owner delivering a product and we get it. Times are tough, but you still have to deliver because 
we're using that video for our own page too you know it's like a double whammy in a sense and these influencers before they didn't know that now we're expressing it more towards them where a little bit there's a respect but that's when you know the company might move to decision number two which is where they want to hire a UGC specialist somebody that just makes these videos specifically for their page what I've seen before when it was just called content creation was they would again find an influencer that usually is like a videographer an actress just somebody that does a lot of promos or somebody that they worked well with recently and they'll be like hey can you make like an additional three videos for us we just want to use them on our social and that's what they'll start with or they'll you know hire somebody full-time the companies that have the budget to hire somebody full time usually is corporate, like with everything in filmmaking, right? One of sure. my first UGC clients was a corporate and still to this day, one of my strongest clients is corporate. They're a loan company, smarter about loans, you know, but that's, you know, what they and how they found me when it comes to like reference points. Lastly, number three, when it comes down to like budgeting, you can hire a production company that does specialize in UGC content. That is the best way to get, obviously, your videos done, highest quality, fulfilled with the best trending topics, trending sounds, because obviously there's a marketing that goes into creating these videos, especially since you don't have an influencer backing to guarantee the video getting seen. It's going to be a lot of other metrics that goes along marketing terms that are going to help push the video. In order for somebody to hire an in-source production company to take on that, you have two problems. It's either budgeting or that there's no production companies. A lot of production companies these days, they're going to look at you and be like, wait, UGC, like we do filmmaking with the cinema camera, with the, you know, Canon 5D Mark IV or the Red or, you know, any black magic to make it to make it make sense. But at the end of the day, it's like, okay, if these film production companies don't even know how to make social content or make social media content that looks natural to the platform that's existing, then you have a need and a demand, which is where my company thrives. So that's the formatted system for you. That's, that's wonderful. What a great, great answer. But I see that because, you know, if I see something that's slick, you know, and I'm an actor uh, and I've been in commercials and uh, TV mm -hmm. and movies, but, you know, sp especially commercials, you're like, oh, they're going to sell me something, click, pass but yeah, i've been fooled, swipe by but i've been fooled many times when uh it's an interesting topic and and then you're like oh, and then all of a sudden you're like wait this was a commercial for whatever you're like that well done very well mm -hmm. done so th exactly. that's wonderful and uh do you do you work with people on a case-by-case -case basis and i don't know if you want to discuss money or anything like that or uh is there a consultation fee or can would you consult with someone um, yeah, so when it comes down to it, for me, I've been doing UGC content for like two years, three years now going, if we're going to use that term, filmmaking background, we're talking 10. When it comes down to the clients that I work with, I have a roster of seven clients I work with on a month to month basis of just in house production UGC content for Indigo Media. We love to take on people as clients. However, like I told you, our biggest issue is the consistency. The consistency is key. We tell our clients, we're like, okay, if you're going to sign on with us for a full in-house in -house production, you know, scale for UGC content, you're looking at at least three months. So that way you're not yelling at us that our videos are not performing well and you want to quit the first month. Because, you know, I have to pay my bills at the end of the month. When it comes down to that full-time production scalability, if anybody's interested in talking prices, Anybody that's in production should be charging, and I'm saying should be charging at least $5,000 per social media like kit that you get. Social media kits most likely going to be like Instagram and a little bit of TikTok or TikTok and a little bit of Instagram and then TikTok and maybe Instagram and a little bit of LinkedIn or like it's a kit of like at least two to three different social media pages. If you can get a company to a kit price, awesome cool you know because you're managing that person's you know it's like you're managing their whole media at that point it should be a five thousand monthly retainer on that for Wonderful. individual monthly like contracts or subscriptions per social media page i've seen them go for as little as one thousand that's more as if it's an independent actor trying to do ugc because they'll sometimes hire independent actors I've seen a lot of actors thrive in that way. They're just, you know, booking commercials, you know, 30 commercials, a thousand a month. They turn them into ads for their TikTok. 
cool. You know, that's on the low end. If you're trying to create it more so within a higher profitability range for one TikTok page, you could look at 3000 to 4000 is something that I priced in the past for just one TikTok page, maybe 20 to 30 videos a month. And it's again, because it's such a need and demand. And plus two, you only have so many weeks to get the actors hired to write the script, to direct, to find the location, to shoot, to edit, to post it and market it and track data and analytics. It goes, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into it. When it comes down to consultations, I do have some clients that do work with me on a consultation kind of basis. That's usually when they can't afford the 1000 grand packages. And you know, it's a good money making process. If you know, like I said, it's a job and it's an industry where there's a demand in it and there's so many companies that need people to do it. So it's like, okay, if the company can't afford it, most cases they can't, then you can take them on a consultation basis where sometimes you can do like five monthly videos or 10 monthly videos. I've done that with so many clients and we've still had like one or two of those monthly set videos gain like 30,000 views, you know? So it's still helpful to them. They already reap the benefits as to what they can get on a monthly scale. They just don't get it in a faster timeline because obviously you're not producing as much content. So there's still ways to get around it. It just depends on how hard you want to go at it and how much of my network do I need to pull in? Do I need to hire actors through Instagram, which some people saw, you know, I was doing recently because I had like a last minute UGC client that came through. It's like, okay, do I need to hire cinematography, you know, or cinematographer real quick? It's like, okay, how fast do I have to get to pull things together in consideration with also the other shoots that I have going on too. So it's such a, it's such a demand at the end of the day. Wow. Well, um, I mean, I mean this as a compliment, you know, you, you're so young and it's, you seem to have accomplished so much. So congratulations. Thank but you. I feel like, like you're an old soul though, too, as well. And, uh, it, like you've been around in other, I don't know, in other lives, it's I guess. a hundred percent true because I'm going to okay. say it right now. I own a vinyl record, like, you know, record set. And I have all the vinyls to like Anna James, Elvis Sherald, um, <laughs> you know, you Frank Sinatra. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I okay. go to, if any, if anybody in the comment section or at least listening in the studio is from San Diego or at least has been to San Diego, I love to go to those jazz bars or those jazz like backstage lounges and just listen to live jazz. We obviously lost that throughout COVID. See, there we go. Somebody said it. Somebody going. But yeah, I just love to listen to old jazz. That's what I do in my free time, you know, when I'm not trying to put all these content creation shoots together. But yeah, I'm glad that we're finally being able to get back out because I can experience things like that. But old soul, 100%. Amazing. Amazing. For those of you that are not here in the in the studio live on Fireside or listening to us on uh, at one of our streaming simulcasts, or either YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, I'm going to read off uh, Natalia's uh, uh, website or where you can find her so that you can connect with her if you'd like. And that's uh, koji.to, K-O-J-I dot T-O slash Natalia Michelle. And that's N as in Nancy, A, T as in Tom, A, L uh, as in Lamb, Y, A, Michelle. Uh, so that's uh, at koji.to. And from there, you can find all her links you know, to her social media and her, you know, her TikTok, her Instagram, but also if you want to connect with her via, you know, for your company or for you, you as an individual, by all means, please uh, reach out to her. And, uh, and again, thank, thank you for, for being here because, uh, and you seem to lead an interesting life, which I think is part of the content creator journey. Uh, yeah. Are, are you Colombian or is your family yes. from Colombia? Correct. Okay, so I am part Colombian, full first generation here, um, though, when it comes to being here in the United States. But my mom, she's from Colombia, specifically Cartagena. And yo sure. puedo hablar español, pero yo tengo un acento muy blanca. Entonces, <laughs> but yeah, like when it comes down to my Colombian content, I feel I'm so grateful, honestly. And I sit here with such a high and big smile because not only has, you know, Disney put Encanto and like Colombian in a more positive light but also my own content as well too ever since Encanto I've noticed a tick in my own content creation when it came down to Colombian based content because you know as a personal brand Natalia Michelle LLC on that one I want to be able to create content that surrounds my beautiful culture and highlight that and if I can make money on it awesome you know 
And on Instagram, I started getting on Reels, Instagram Reels, at least a half a million views ever since Encanto for all my Colombian content. So it's pushing me to go out, you know, to Colombia and film. So it's such an interesting dynamic because I'm here and I'm like, okay, it's family, it's culture. Also being, you know, first generation here is like somebody that was told that they were always going to be living and just growing up here in America, like not getting pushed to go back just to film for social and my family seeing all this too. It's such an interesting blend, but you know, grateful, thankful, being able to show and highlight us Latinos and Latinas on the screen, you know, or at least in mobile devices. So it's getting attention on that, positive attention. I'm glad. I love it. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah. Please let's uh, everyone let, let's give Natalia a round of applause Thank and throw you. The up there. And please, if, if you're getting value from this, please share, please share it because I think it's going, it's a, it's very valuable, especially, you know, all of us uh, need this information. So I'd love, almost like to do this on a regular basis, Natalia, if, if you have time, if you're up for it, I would love to, you know, ask you to come back and uh, we can keep just expanding on this, you know, what people need to be doing. And maybe even if you have time, ask some questions, I mean, I'm sorry, answer some questions from our audience or as the show grows, you know, take questions uh, from from people that, that are watching this at a, at a latter date, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, this will be up on, on Anchor. And it's uh, and please, uh, folks, if you're just listening, please go to paulvato uh, dot com and then you can connect with my with my podcast or search for Paul Vato Presents. And it's across all social um, uh, all the podcasting platforms. As a matter of fact, b- today being Tuesday. Uh, in May, it just dropped this morning, uh, May 10th. Is that today? I don't even know what day it is. I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think <May> so. <laughs> so uh, it just dropped this morning at about 10 a.m. I put them up at 5, and, and they went live at about 10 a.m., and it's with video and everything. So so please find uh, Paul Vato Presents. And it's not just people in tech. It's celebrities across all uh, all all walks of life. Because I feel, you know, the thing is, you're the best of both worlds because you're an actor as well. Maybe we should touch base a little bit on your acting journey. I know you've been doing that for yeah. a long time. And I don't know if, if you like, I think you tell people how old you are, but you're so young you. and inspirational. I think more young people like you should be following the same path. I mean, you, you're a business owner. Uh, I, and I know I think we connected through Instagram because you were promoting an event. And I was like, you know, because I see, you know, my, I don't know if the, 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 which, which would be the right way to say it. I see a little bit of me and you or you and me because I was always that same guy that was always promoting my comedy shows, my improv shows when I was in Chicago. This was when we had to go out and hand out flyers and stuff. So, you yeah. know, that changed. But you're that go-getter that's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I've put together this event in this mansion. And maybe I'm making that up, but, you know. No, it's, no, it's, you're 100% right. Those okay, are the details okay. as to, like, a few of my events. So when it comes down to what I do on like a personal brand level, yes, there's a lot of acting that goes into it. My acting background expands for 10 years, you know, so if there are any actors in the comment section or even just listening, you know, I hope that this can be relatable. But I just remember just while going through my career as an actress, especially very young in the industry, I'm 20 years old currently. So I started when I was like nine or 10 in the industry going through and doing all these self tapes i remember having to do cds for reels right and i remember having to do headshots on paper so don't come at me but i remember having to do all these things and then i saw the development and transition to social media when it came down to acting i remember just growing up and i always got told no because of so many outlandish reasons like for example i had braces or because of my height or because of the fact that i was colombian for even that reason too. So it was just, there were so many limiting reasons as to why I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And social media gave me that opportunity as an actor to use what these casting directors were saying as weaknesses in order to highlight the uniqueness to my own brand and actually pitch it for me to star in other movies, television series, et cetera, just off of my social media. And I'm saying this with so much pride and I'm hoping I'm speaking to the right actor here in this room, but with just social media has been given, is given me the ability to not only not have a nine to five job, right? Which I'm pretty sure is the one thing that every actor says holds them back at some point in their career is having that nine to five job. 
but not only not having the nine to five job, make more than an average minimum wage here in California. We all know Cali is expensive to live in, so grateful for that. But it's given me opportunities to work on other projects, to work on other films, and I've gotten casted and scouted through social media. I posted a video recently how I worked on like Darn Man's video set or film set not so long ago. I usually wait about, I want to say six six months to a year before I start posting all these projects publicly. This is just like my own personal thing. But I worked with Darn Man and he ended up finding me just through social media. I ended up getting a $12,000 paid corporate commercial just through my TikTok page by just acting and doing a commercial little skit. So I'm telling you as an actor, it's like you skip over the having to audition process, which is what I really like. You don't have to go drive to LA, hope you get the call back and wait and see and compete with 300 other set actors. It's actually almost like a professional job inquiry where you're going to someone being like, hey, I want to cast you as an actor for this commercial because we like you and we think you're a perfect candidate. There might be two or three other people that they're looking at, like with any other regular job opportunity, I hope. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you're not having to jump through as many loops loopholes but the pay is also better too so you're getting treated hopefully like you know what you deserve at the end of the day so as an actor doing that and just treating social and using it as a tool has been so helpful so helpful in that modeling I booked a lot of print photography um UGC like Instagram photos Instagram if you didn't know already is becoming like an e-commerce brand app now so when it comes down to Instagram getting those like product photography photos is where I thrive best being a five foot two five foot four model you know very short but then on top of that even just directing if you're on the crew production side I've used like staff me up you know on mandy.com in order to get jobs in the past that works with like PLC HBO but even just as COVID progresses we need to have smaller film crews in order to not you know catch COVID on set so even being able to just get scouted through social media I had like the discovery network take a look at my TikTok at one point so even just having your social media be an asset when applying to these jobs super helpful amazing amazing and uh not that that's the most important thing but how many so how many followers do you have I guess across the different platforms you know how many do you have on on Instagram how many do you have on TikTok So TikTok is my largest platform right now. I have almost 300,000. It fluctuates. I grow and I grow about like 100 so followers a day. And then at the same time, I'm clearing out my account too, because I've been a long term user on TikTok. So I'm like fluctuating between 50 to 100 new followers a day growth and loss. So averages 50 like growth just consistently. When it comes down to my Instagram, Instagram, I've been seeing a lot of traction for I have 10.2 K followers right now and then I've been seeing the same kind of retention there like 50 to 100 new follower growth daily as well too mm-hmm. on YouTube that's where I'm trying to translate people to go towards hopefully for monetization I'm reaching close to 300 on YouTube like with Clubhouse Fireside since I'm not on here often I don't know it's like at a 16 or 17 follower count ratio unless y'all want to help out with that um, but at the end of the day TikTok is my largest one with 300,000 And then LinkedIn is the same thing. I'm trying to expound on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I think I have like 40, right now 40 connections. But TikTok is my main one. TikTok, 300,000. I also have other accounts with the company that I manage. So one of the company accounts that we have on our roster is 4 million. So that sounds better for, yeah, that sounds better for the camera. 4 million for the company account. Um, But, you know, personal brand, it's 300,000. Perfect. I mean, my goodness, you know, it's it's such a strong reach and influence. I mean, that's that's why I guess we're called influencers. Uh, we, I'm, I'm lumping myself in there, uh, maybe a micro influencer over here, but uh, which I I understand is is a great place to be. People are looking for micro influencers. So even if you have a small following, but you have influence on them, I mean, you can you can leverage that to your advantage. Yeah. When I was a micro-influencer, and I'm just, again, trying to inspire and motivate the people here to really just take on this undeveloped opportunity. But when I was a micro-influencer two years ago, I'm pretty sure we all know what Fiverr is. Fiverr is a freelance platform, right? This was two years ago, 17,000 on TikTok, 2,000 on Instagram, maybe barely 2,000. I was making five grand a month 
just on video oh. creation. And wow. I didn't even have to post half of the videos on my personal pages. So I'm telling you, like, just even with a 17,000 follower account, you can still utilize it in a way that can make you income in so many ways. And that's just off of Fiverr. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so we can't let any excuse really stop us, especially when we have the ability to create right there, right on our phone. You've got all the editing equipment you need. You have the sound equipment. You don't even need micro. You don't need anything. You know, your phone alone can do it. And I mean, it's no excuses, folks. Yeah. And then even when it comes down to quality, too, because this is something that I personally get hung up as a creator on. I'm so hung up on watching the cinematography and all my videos mm -hmm. and just making sure that, you know, everything is within frame, following rule of thirds, you know, because filmmaking background. But as a content creator, I'm trying to really grow into the fact that as much as quality does matter, I have some friends that are just posting with their cell phone, like, and they're in a bathrobe and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. And I'm here and I'm like, okay, as long as I keep quality in mind, if that's something that I just personally want to do for my videos, I can't let that scare me and hold me back from not posting and letting that be a vessel for excuses. So at the end of the day, you know, I think the only excuses you could really give, you know, is like things like a nine to five job, you know, I get it, kids, sure. marriage, you know, regular life, it does hold you back. However, just know that those are things that you're going to have to overcome in order to be able to get on the side of the creative environment or the creative demographic. It's difficult. It's so difficult. I'm telling you, I'm still, you know, struggling and learning in my own ways as well, even while growing the business. But you know, it's why I, I talk about my experiences and I hope no one makes these same mistakes and they can learn. So that's, that's wonderful. Uh, we would love to have you. I don't know if I, if I've sent you the information for owl, but uh, which is a platform where you can answer questions. I've heard of owl. I think maybe. we should get you on there because you, you, you're basically uh, you can charge whatever you want for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right now there's a special, you know, because it's still in beta where we're only charging a dollar for 10 minutes, but it's also a great lead gen funnel where somebody might call you to ask you a question. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, here's what I offer. And then they're like, yeah, I want to hire you. So right now that's kind of the way people are using it, but I'll, I'll send you a link for that because I think you would make a wonderful expert on the owl app uh, where you get paid for your knowledge. It's almost like Uber where you can say for the next two hours I'm available or for the next 30 minutes, whatever you set your yeah. availability. Somebody sees what you do and they're like, well, let, let me chat with her because I have some questions about TikTok specifically. And so imagine, you know, or you could say like, you know what, I'm going to buy real estate or I've bought real estate, but I have a mortgage question. Uh, oh, here's a person that does mortgages. Let me call and talk to them. So it works both ways. You can be an advice seeker and an advice giver. But so if anybody nice. wants, wants, wants that link, I'll, you know, send it to me. Uh, and I'm a brand ambassador for them, you know, full disclosure, but I, I love uh, the product and the community, which is also being built up on Clubhouse, uh, well, you know, across all social media, but there's this great community where like on Mondays and uh, Wednesdays, we're, we're having rooms on Clubhouse where experts can just answer your questions. So, you know, of course it's free, but if you want access to someone, then you can just say, hey, I'm on OWL, I'm $10 for 10 minutes, or I'm, you know, uh, um, $30 for 10 minutes, or I'm $100 for 10 minutes. You know, Gary V comes on, he could say, hey, I'm 500 bucks for 10 minutes and you can ask me anything you want about my, you know, I'll look at your social media, whatever. You know, so it just kind of, it depends, you know, you set your own rate, but realistically it's, you know, what are people going to pay for your expertise? So if you don't mind, I'll send you that link. Cause I think you yeah, would be an amazing, uh, and maybe even a brand ambassador for all, but that's something we can talk about later. If you like, if you like the, the platform. Shoot me the details, shoot me the details. I absolutely will. Man, it is, I don't know how much time you have. You know, I, I know that you're a very busy young lady and I don't mean to keep bringing up the word young, but for me, it, it's a badge of honor. I think that you should carry with pride because to have accomplished so much at such a young age, uh, you know, and of course, you know, I don't think you let that define you because, you know, again, it's about mental health, mental well being. But to be, you know, somewhat, you know, well traveled and going to Colombia, I want to join you on a Colombia trip because my, my, my sister in law, my brother's wife, uh, Carolina, is uh -huh. from Colombia. She's Colombian. She's from oh, Barranquilla, nice. where Shakira's from, and they're always yeah. dancing. And you know, so I would love to visit. Uh, 
I, I, I'll needle them a bit. I'll joke with them and I'll say, uh, oh, I, uh, and your mom would probably hate this as well. I, I like to say like, oh no, I know everything about Cartagena. I go, I oh. watched Romancing the Stone. It's a great documentary. And they get pissed. They're like, yeah. it's, it's, it's horrible. It made our country look horrible. And, and, uh, and they're like, uh, is Cartagena uh, by the sea, by the beach or something? Or? It is. It is. On yeah. It yeah. It and is, Cartagena yeah. was like, in the movie was like in the middle of the mountains. They're like, that's not even Cartagena. They were so upset. So I like to needle them a little bit <laughs> about yeah. that. Yeah. Cartagena I really like is- it's the best way to describe Cartagena, and this is quoting one of my white American friends who came with me on my Columbia expedition um, not too long ago. He said that it was a mix between or between Tijuana and Miami. So he said, just picture okay. the two mixed, and he was like, that is Colombia. And because, honestly, the streets, they're never quiet. They are always having music, go around, parties fiestas there's always something to do in colombia it's always an active environment so definitely One. recommend yeah definitely recommend the beach the coastal environment beautiful that's my favorite part going to playa blanca i posted a few videos about that on my instagram page but i love playa blanca but yeah colombia is such a paradise such a paradise oh, it's my happy place oh I, i'm as, as it would be mine i think uh how long ago did you go and for how long were you there Okay, so fun fact on my Columbia trip, and I hope to God, if y'all want to click the link in my bio and like follow me on YouTube for this, this, this is, you know, a little teaser as to like what's coming out. So when it comes to me and like my Colombian experience, growing up here in the United States, I remember growing up and, you know, going back often, very often. Like I went back two, three times, saw family for a few months, and then came back. There was a good period for seven to eight years where I did not go back, and I just grew up per normal, per usual. And that was at the very beginning of my entertainment career. So I would be going back now as a full-fledged adult, not 11 anymore, and, you know, being an entertainer and having this following. And then it's going to be such a culture shock, not only for myself to reintroduce that to my family and just as a who am I as a person, but for them to see me in that kind of light. So I was like, okay, at the very least, I have to go soon have to go and plus my mom and my younger sister other members of my family that live here in the United States they haven't gone as of recent either so I was like okay if anybody's gonna make this trip it has to be me that was one of the main reasons why I went December of last year 2021 with you know a media group in order to go to Colombia another big influence again is because reels on Instagram real bonuses on Instagram a lot of the videos that I knew were going to perform well we're going to be in relation to Colombia um, in a short term, you know, because we're ABCing this story up. I saw a lack in my environment when it came down to Colombian based content. And I was like, okay, as somebody that, you know, wants to go back as somebody that is a part of the culture, let's just go ahead and do it. So I went with myself, you know, by myself and two other individuals, one director and one cinematographer to Colombia. And I double based the trip. I made it obviously as like a, oh, I'm going to go and reunite with my family after 10 so years video, Mm -hmm. which will be coming out soon on YouTube and just my perspective on somebody that has always been here in the United States. And that's always gotten told to have pride for the United States, but also to have pride for my country too. And also somebody that utilized like a foreign trip and just grabbing content and how I was able to pull that production team together send it off to Colombia during the pandemic for $300 round trip ticket, you know, just the even more emphasis on like how crazy the story is getting passports like the day before and just really making it out to Colombia and being able to shoot all this content. And yeah, there's going to be longer videos coming out on YouTube that talk more in depth with the experience right now. and just putting like short teasers on Instagram that I've been performing while well YouTube, but I'm so excited to just talk about more the mental as to how the whole process was, which leads me on to, you know, I'm going back in August of this year and I have to go back in order to shoot content again. So it's going to be a good lead up as to the new content that'll be coming out. Well, if, if, if you need to, to bring someone along, you let me know and I can help you out in any way, shape or form, whether it's holding the camera or directing or 
you know, you, we are in passing and we are looking for people. I was just speaking to somebody, not actually, like before I ended up jumping on this podcast or interview, was just speaking to somebody about hiring them for the Columbia trip. So I need people always for shoots. And then I have one potentially coming up in Italy. It's a corporate shoot that I have to fulfill. So I'm just looking for reliable. I think that's the biggest word I have reliable talent uh, actors muas cinematographers follow the gram shoot me a message with your portfolios and then i have and i create a whole roster and i just text people from that roster and book them io, io parlo italiano so if you need help with that i go oh know. wow no way si, si, io, io parlo uh, no, no no piccolo però però parlo italiano no molto bene però and you can speak it fully and fluently, or fluently, uh, correct? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I will be there getting by the time there. I go. No, no, right. uh, but, but I can be, uh-huh. I can be understood. Uh, I can order. I can, I can, you know, because it's so molto simile a español. You know, very similar to Spanish. Yeah. But, you know, of course, when they're speaking it at full speed, that's when I'm kind of like, oh, you know, slow down just a little bit. Um, oh, so, so yeah, but but uh, it's I studied it back in college, and then, of course, during the pandemic, I'm like, how, how am I going to better myself during this time? And I was like, you know what? Let me pick up Italian again. And so I'm in the clubhouse rooms. And at first it was a little oh. rough. But now, as soon as they see me, they pop up. They're like, Paolo, come on. I'm like, molto bene, grazie. You know, <laughs> so I'm right there. That's and I would awesome. love to visit Italy. So that we could do, uh, f- maybe we'll get Fireside. We should try and get them to sponsor us because we could do Fireside from around the world. But it kind of speaks to, to a project that I want to do. And, and maybe I'll, you know, we'll chat about that some other time, which is um, I, I want to do a travel show where I meet the people in real life that I've only met on social audio. So whether mm-hmm. uh, now, of course, it'll probably just start in the U.S., but then I want to I want to go you know worldwide because I've met so many interesting people from all over the world, including Italy, but Africa, um, uh, the Middle East, you know, just people that I've met via via Clubhouse and all these other social audio apps. But I've never, maybe some, I haven't even met face to face. I I haven't even done this, you know, so maybe this is a start, but I really want to do a travel show based around that. So, you know, if if anyone visits paulvato.com, I have, uh, I have something set up there for that. If if, if anyone wants to help or donate or want to see me in, in Italy or France or wherever. Uh, and the yeah. cool thing too, and that's what I was even mentioning. I've talked to clients in the past, and even with just creative commercials, shows, shoots, etc., you can get so much funding just by having an established platform, as long as that has consistency. Again, consistent views, consistent followers. You can get brand sponsorships to help cover the cost for these trips and things as such. So there's always m- ways to make it financially profitable. There's always different ways. You just have to, you know, think outside of the box a little sometimes. Wonderful. Now, uh, and now that we're talking, touching a little bit on money, uh, I, you know, and you're a business, you've, you've not necessarily incorporated, but but you have your LLC and whatnot, your limited liability. Yeah, a li- limited liability. Uh, now, it's also, these are also write-offs because almost anything that we do, <laughs> content <laughs> it's 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 a write-off because you're like oh here I, yeah i bought this shirt but i'm i'm using it you know on here or i'm going to italy to shoot content okay it's a write-off you know so, yeah. so that's for people to keep in mind 100 percent. and i'm gonna say this loud and proudly when it comes to the write-offs that you can make as you know an llc or just a company even as a sole prop or just the benefits you can get with the american system that we live in right now um, just, you know, to put examples, last year when everybody was talking about stimulus checks, everybody was talking about one grand, two grand, et cetera. Business stimulus checks, you know, if you said that you were an LLC or even a sole proprietorship, which, you know, in California, it's very state by state from what I know personally. I'm not an attorney or lawyer. Don't quote me on it. But at the end of the day, I was receiving business stimulus checks for $22,000 just to show the kind of income profitability you can receive when it comes to making or even classifying yourself as a business with all the legal loopholes you can do when it comes down to taxes and writing those things off. I mean, we just went through tax season right now. However, I'm not out of it. And I'll say this loud and proudly as a warning and maybe, you know, hopefully benefit and 
what do you call it? light at the end of the tunnel for some business owners tax season for every business owner is the best time of the year and also worst time of the year because mm-hmm. you can either get a big refund back or you won't get anything back when it comes down to my taxes i have been trying to get my tax return back since 2020 i'm not <laughs> even kidding you yes sir i've not even had the chance to file for this year because i'm still waiting on last year I had a phone call with the IRS today. And just to really emphasize this even more, I got through in less than 15 minutes and they knew my name because I, of how often I call the IRS because it's <laughs> such a prevalent issue. Right? Wow. Like I even have the direct number, like pin number just to go through to the person to help me with this issue. Cause it's been so long. Like I love the IRS, but didn't want it, didn't want it to get to this point. Right. But at the end of the day, I still am waiting on my taxes. And last I heard from today, this afternoon, because I did call this morning, not even kidding. They told me, give me another month. Give me another month for my 2020 return. So after this interview, I'm going to have to call the hotline again, punch in my little number, speak to that person again and be like, look, so why is it a month again? What's going on? And just really get, you know, my thoughts across. So I guess that's like the biggest thing is, you know, it reaps the benefits, but however, you really have to be persistent, vocalize your thoughts, because not everybody, you know, is going to prioritize their situation in the way that you might prioritize it, you know, and they might say it might be things like COVID, which I get it, are external factors that do affect processing times, but you really have to be your own advocate when it comes to this industry, especially in business. And, you know, similar to entertainment as actors filmmakers directors you have to be your own advocate but in business oh you're fighting for money and people don't want to let that go you you went from job opportunity to hardcore money now yeah and 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 that's the thing you know the grass is always greener on the other side so a lot of times you know you are working for someone and you're like oh i can't wait to stop working for this person be in business for myself you know a lot of times you're buying yourself a job but you know i've always said I would rather, you know, work 12 to 20 hours for myself than eight hours for someone else. So, you know, there is that. But now as I'm getting older, I'm like, you know what, maybe I should just work for someone else. I think I've done everything backwards where, you know, I I had my first business when I was 23. So I'm I'm a little jealous that you started earlier, but that's great. Um, But I was always kind of working on commission, even when I, you know, right after college at, at 20 and with the 21, uh, it was always, so it's always been kind of like sales jobs would that kind of uh, rely on myself, uh, not so much an hourly wage. So, um, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's for me, it's always been, you know, long hours and me having to do everything almost, almost a one person show. So now as I've gotten older, it's, it's more about collaboration and doing things like this that really speak to me, meeting wonderful people, interviewing wonderful people, uh, and then and now, but I'm like, if, you know, if I'm going to work, maybe I should just work for someone. I feel like I've done everything backwards, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. At the end of the day, and that's something that I even talk to people with the rise of social media and the attention that we have on it. We look at social media, we see this post about entrepreneurs saying that they go from zero to 10 K overnight. I'm going to let you know right now, it's not overnight. It, it is to a certain degree because, you know, for example, for me, I make money through like Reels bonus, as I mentioned up like briefly through this podcast. With Reels bonus, they might cap you at $800 a month for three months. And then that's how much you're making. With a typical raise and like a regular job, you might get $2 more and everybody is like so happy for you, right? With a raise in this kind of environment, you might go from an $800 cap to an $8,000 cap. Mm -hmm. And then although the cap is advertised, that doesn't mean that you're generating that cap consistently. So it's, you know, all these different things that happen behind the scenes. So going from somebody that works, you know, in the business environment, it's like, okay, these overnight successes, number one, sure, they might be, but you have no idea what it took in order to get there. And even if they're generating that money consistently, because that consistency is still a big issue, even for my Mm -hmm. business with this day and age, because you have to rely on other contracts and other people paying you to do and fulfill some kind of service at the end of the day. COVID and external factors are going to affect those other people, their personalities, their employees, their work dynamic, and whatever it might be. I can tell you as somebody that works in business, although 
they, we always say like, it's so great to work for yourself. At the end of the day, you're not really in a, in a sense, like you are, but you're not really, because there's always going to be somebody else that you have to go through and fulfill a service with. So yeah. sure, you have more of a voice and you can wear PJs, you know, when you're working on set, sure, like, because you're managing the environment, you have more say awesome cool but then you're also taking care of all the other people that you contracted so now sure you have to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. awesome cool but now you're taking care of all these other people and sometimes you have to might prioritize another person's rent another person's paycheck over yours which is going to be the tough call as a business owner at the end of the day which is where businesses have the potential to go bankrupt to get into lawsuits or to have these things happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. I wish somebody told me that earlier. Like it's impossible to avoid these things and you're just going to have to persevere through with so much courage and so much funding. You're going to really have to have a nest egg. But at the end of the day, you know, even though you're working for yourself at the end of the day, there's always going to be people that are going to try and tear you down. There's always going to be people that are going to think that they owe you something, even if it might be from your elementary school childhood. You never know who's going to throw something at you. You just always have to be prepared. But you are taking care of yourself and you're also taking care of other families. And the stress and pressure only continues to grow as the more people you do have involved comes on, whether that's for a single day project or a reoccurring UGC shoot. But you're talking with and involving yourself with more people. And therefore, you know, your name is going to be in more people's mouths naturally because mm-hmm. you're feeding their, them and their families at the end of the day. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah 100%. Well, I, I like a couple of things uh, that you said. And one of them is, you know, being being able to be in PJs, for example, right now, I'm not even wearing pants, but here we are working. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go. I was going to say, you know, I've done that for some Zoom shoots. I had like some shorts on and I was like, okay, we're just going to have like the top half going because, you know, I I, I say this and I vocalize this on my platform. I I, like like, preached it. I have endometriosis. So when it's that time of the month, as like a girl, oh my God, I'm letting you know right now, I would not be able to work a regular nine to five job. And I'm so grateful that I have the option to, you know, decide what clothes that I wear. Because sometimes some of the clothes that I might wear for Zoom meetings might be a little too restrictive and it might make me feel like I'm in a lot of pain. So at least in the environment that I'm in, because of the health background that I have, I can actually choose clothes that don't give me pain. If I need to take medication or if I need to take a nap, I can make those calls throughout the day because I am my own business and I don't have to, you know, wait until another 30, you know, 30 minutes to go on break. So it's like, it's so nice to be able to make those calls, even if it might be as simple as closing all the way down to how you structure your day, just having that flexibility. It's, it's so helpful. So helpful. Wonderful. Yeah. No, you know what? Thank you so much for all that. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. Oh, something that you mentioned also about, uh, and I had, I, there was a saying that was, you know, oh my goodness, now that I'm in business for myself, I went from one boss to you know, fifty bosses or a hundred bosses or a thousand bosses. It depends how many customers you have, you know. So, mm-hmm. so, so that's that's one of those things that we have to, uh, uh, you know, keep in mind. It's it does. It's not always as easy as it looks. So, you know what? Thank you so much. If if you have any final thoughts, and I feel like you've already even wrapped it up so nicely. But more importantly, if you want to once again, if you want to give out your your website where people can find you, and then if you have some final thoughts, and then I can wrap it up uh, and especially though thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and i hope that we can do this again because you're just such a wealth of information but uh and i i you know i don't expect you to just give but i hope that something comes back to you and maybe somebody hires you or or reaches out to you and and uh, yeah maybe we can make owl a part of your your journey as well yeah i mean when it comes down to me and myself if anybody wants to just talk to me more i'm always willing to answer any questions on the dms and side you can always find me just google my name natalia michelle and something will pop up a social media platform will take you to where you need to go just click the link in my bio um you'll have like video links article links you'll have questionnaires if you want anything from information about indigo media all the way down to natalia michelle it's all there in the link in bio, but yeah, um, just message me and we'll always figure it out. Amazing. Well, Natalia, thank you. And welcome back to Fireside. Yeah, please let everyone give uh, Natalia a round of applause. Thank you. And please share, you know, this, uh, 
uh, th this feed uh, once it's once it's gone live. Please, everyone, give Natalia a beautiful round of applause. Thank you guys for that. And give yourself a round of applause for being here, spending some of your day with us. And thank you, Natalia, again for being so generous with your time. I'm going to invite the wait bot up and then uh, close it up uh, real soon. So uh, you can find me at paulvato.com or vato.tv. And please, uh, if, if I could ask just one favor, is if you go to Spotify or iTunes and give a follow to Paul Vato Presents. This episode will probably be up within the next week or so. Uh, it's actually live if you want to listen to the replay here on Fireside or on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. But it will drop officially uh, probably next week sometime, maybe before that, if, if, uh, if all the other podcasts I have start doing very well. And with your help, maybe they will. So if you could give me a follow on Spotify and, and uh, iTunes, that would be the best. And if you could even just drop a five-star review, maybe listen to it first, but you don't have to. They're really good. Uh, and it's celebrities from all walks of life. And my latest one here was, uh, was Natalia Michelle, a social influencer and actor, the CEO of her own company, and uh, somebody to watch in the future. So Natalia, once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In this a hombre holding up the bottle Look a little closer, cigar in Moscato An actor in improv, coming from Chicago Alto, make way for Paul Vato Pablo's